getting loaded up here, headed to Tobermory, which is the very tip of the Bruce Peninsula. We are going to go on the Georgian Bay side of Lake Huron, which has crystal clear blue waters, thanks to the limestone. And unfortunately, to do this, we gotta put back on the dry suit. So we're looking mighty fine in our long john. Got an upgraded ride today. My parents needed a bunch of stuff transported up to our family cottage, and their vehicle's a lot bigger and nicer than mine. So I got new wheels. One road that ends at Tobermory. Unless you're taking the ferry to Manitoulin Island, and the island connects by roadway to the Trans Canada Highway just north of Sudbury. So this road ends in Tobermory. Going to the last stop. Beep, beep. Lion's Head is also a beauty place to paddle. Crystal clear waters like Tobermory because it's on the Georgian Bay side of Lake Huron and it's lower down on the Bruce Peninsula so it's faster and quicker to get to if you're not staying in the area. I'll link in the description to the blog that I have on Lion's Head if you want to check that out too. I love this time of year because it's warmer and nice out. Things are back open, but it's not busy yet. June, if you can make it happen, is a great time to go. The only downside is it's cooler on the water because Georgian Bay is typically cold. You'll be lucky if Georgian Bay gets up to you know, 15 degrees Celsius in the summer. We're here. We made it. Here's the boat launch. It's creepily dead for a weekend at 9 a.m., which I love too. Parking would be ramboozled by now, so this is awesome. This is the main harbor called Little Tub Harbor. It can get pretty gnarly out there. This is pretty protected. We checked the winds last night, or checked them this morning. So I'm gonna pull up my apps, Windfinder and Windy, check the wind, check the swell, and we're always assessing when we get out there. One thing I love about taking my parents' car, it has a jack for my electric pump at the back in the trunk, so I can hook it on and it's so much easier than hooking it into my center console in my car. Someone that works for the harbor is usually hanging in and around this area. So make sure that you're paying your $5 fee to use the boat ramp. No! Gotta put the dry suit back on. It's gonna be a hot spicy one because the sun's warm, but the water is cold. So you always have to dress for the water temperature. So it's gotta be done. I got my side bag because the launch is right there. Easy, accessible, I don't have to hike in. That's when the backpack's the best. But this is great to have for easy accessibility. For longer paddles, we're just sitting on my deck. Before we launch, I'm getting everything set up. Got the deck bag on here. I've got the little sucker. Wetting it will actually make it suckier. We'll make it stickier. That water is fresh. I'm all dry, but I can feel the coolness of the water against my dry suit. Ready to go. Let's do this. This hat felt pretty fitting. It's the first time back on Lake Huron for 2022. The Chichimon, which is the big ferry, doesn't come into this harbor. We'll see where it does on the way out. Some of the cruises, the dive boats, they all leave from here, so you really have to pay attention. Especially this time of year, no one's used to seeing a paddler out. That's, you know, give it another month maybe, and you'll see more people paddling. Folks line it up to get on their cruise. They uh, check out the shipwrecks. We're gonna go check that out, as well as take people to Flower Pot Island, which is about a five kilometer paddle out. I've never done it. It can get choppy. There's a lot of boat traffic. I wouldn't recommend paddling Flower Pot Island as a beginner, but you could always take a boat and take your gear with you and paddle when, once you're out there. Right here at the end of the harbor is a rental place. In the summertime, there's lots of floating docks that are out and it's a busy spot. They've got kayaks, they've got sand up paddle boards. Two Harbor Marine. Just right there is where the Tobermory Harbor office is. So if no one's at the boat launch, you can go there and pay your fee. Just left, as soon as you come out of Little Tub Harbor, which is the main marina, you can see right here are the docks for the Chichimon, the ferry to Manitoulin Island. It takes cars, trucks, all types of stuff. So it's a big ramp here and it pulls in and its nose opens. It's 
awesome to watch come in, but obviously if it's coming in, I wouldn't be right here. So not only is it important to check the ferry schedule for traffic on the road getting into Tomori, but also for when you'll see it in the water. It's a pretty big ship, so it's pretty hard to miss. We got a bit of a headwind, which is great because then you'll get the wind over with and we're going to head out into the main bay here and going left into Big Tub Harbor. The other thing that's so amazing about this time of year is everyone's excited that summer's coming. You can feel the energy with the people who work here and the people who are also visiting. But I mean, who would be grumpy when you're over here on the bus? Come on. Check out the clear waters, it never gets old. Limestone cliffs, so sick. You can see it dump into the water, straight down. It's part of the Niagara escarpment. And you see the white along the bottom? Over time, limestone oxidizes. That's why this is dark. But if you see lower down, it's bleached out white. And that's from the ice in the winter time hitting and slowly shaving away the oxidation. Sick! They're going to see the shipwreck. See you there. Look at that water and the cliff going all the way in and down. So sick. So you kind of think, oh yeah, this little harbor is a dead end. No, there's some cool shit under the water. There she be. Sweepstakes was built in Burlington, Ontario in 1867 as a cargo ship. It was a two-mast wooden schooner at 36.3 meters or 119 feet. On August 23, 1885, the boat hit rock near Cove Island and sank in shallow waters close to the light station. The vessel remained there until September when it was towed into Big Tub Harbor. Sweepstakes was beyond repair and was stripped of all useful rigging and equipment before sinking at its present location. The cargo of coal was salvaged at a later date. The wreck today has nearly an intact hull and is in 6 meters or 20 feet of water. So cool. You can see the planks. Sweepstakes is one of the best preserved 19th century Great Lakes schooners. Stunning. I love coming here. The other shipwreck in Big Tub Harbor is the city of Grand Rapids, which was a wooden passenger steamer ship that caught fire while docked in Little Tub Harbor on October 29, 1907. The 38 meter or 125 feet ship was towed away from the harbor into the open water to prevent the fire from burning down the harbor docks and buildings. City of Grand Rapids was towed into Georgian Bay until the line burned and the ship floated free. The winds blew the burning ship into Big Tub Harbor where it ran into the ground and burned to the water line. Today, the hull still rests in Big Tub Harbor. All right, let's head out of Big Tub Harbor and check out Big Tub Harbor later. Just soak in the beauty and the peace. The Ontario flag waving. It's a Dover Morgan adventure. Here we are, Big Tub Lighthouse. We're actually going to pull in here and have a lunch. At least people were watching me. But I'm a show. <laughs> and this is why you wear a dry suit, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty sweet spot to stop for lunch. <laughs> Nothing like a classic PB&J. <laughs> keeping it simple, keeping it tasty on the water. <laughs> I love chatting to people, especially if it's their first time here. Fresh eyes on such a beautiful area. Really cool. Time to saddle up and get going again. Testing out the dry suit and seeing how deep these rocks go. I am on the very edge of the cliff. Look at the color of the water now that the sun's out. Holy shit. It's shocking that this is Ontario. I've had people repost some of my footage when I'm on Georgian Bay on Lake Huron and label it as the tropics. Time to head back to Tomori Little Tub Harbor where the main marina is. What a battle this has been. I, I love hearing the sounds of the water lapping against the limestone rocks. Gargling. So awesome. 
Back in the main marina, Little Tub Harbor. We made it! Finish our beverage and get out of this dry suit. I was actually pretty comfortable because there was a cool breeze and the air around the water, which is very cold, five degrees Celsius, was chilly off the water. So that was great, perfect day. Thrilled with my dry suit. I know I was a little grumpy putting it on, but if I didn't have my dry suit, I wouldn't be paddling Tobermory right now. This duck is like the new beaver. It just jumped off the dock, dove in, and I saw it come over a huge fish, bigger than the size of this duck's head. Insane. When you get the best parking spot right beside the launch, and you can open your trunk right from the launch. Zach! Launch, car. <gasps> Excellent. Pays to be early. We're packing up and I like to, on my kit bin, I put all my wet stuff like my fins, my little suckers, my tow rope. I put all of that on top while it dries, fold up my board and head out. <laughs> Everyone always looks. Usually if it's a quiet park, then I'll warn people because it is very loud and surprising. Here we're at a marina in a parking lot. I usually get a lot of looks. A lot of looks on the water too, so. And I get a lot of looks when I'm filming. I wonder why. <laughs> Gonna fully get off my dry suit and put on a change of clothes. I brought more than just my long underwear that I was wearing this morning because I knew it was going to heat up and be a beautiful day. If I don't have a towel or a chain pad, I'll use the top of my kit bin or another bin that I have. That way I'm not getting all gross on my feet. I'm not stepping on the concrete or asphalt because otherwise it'll slowly get damaged and then the leak. It's so nice having the luxury of all of this space of this beautiful vehicle. Ah, not that I'm gonna be putting things in slot plate or not, I can lay them out and let them dry a bit while I drive and then it's easier to put away into the vehicle versus trying to really cram things and oh, I love it. Sorry mom and dad, this is my vehicle now. <laughs> That's a wrap on our Dobermory adventure. See you in the water soon. Coming up on Paddle Adventurer YouTube channel, a video with paddle location and adventure details for Tobermory, Ontario. Plus a behind the scenes video as we explore the area to capture up-to-date information to ensure you have the best next adventure. And this is definitely not a beginner friendly entry. Well, that was interesting. Hit subscribe so you don't miss out.